स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Welcome back to the lecture series in Bioenergetics of Life Processes. So, in the first week, we have given overall introduction of the course and uh, certain aspects, what you have dealt, what remained the situation in the prebiotic soup and how possibly the first cell has evolved. So, this week, we will kind of uh, further formalize our understanding, we will kind of uh, structure it better just the way through the ages, through billionia, the self-assembly of molecules led to the formation of what we know as a biological cell and how this biological cell is capable of uh, making energy rich molecule and generating by burning those molecules, generating heat and maintaining an order. So, essentially if you, if one looks into the whole uh, bioenergetics perspective where the energy is playing the critical role, it is basically this energy is trying to create an order out of this chaotic molecular assemblies or molecules all over the place. And in order to create an order, a structure like cell, a multicellular organism, even a simplest of the simplest uh, unicellular organism like uh, bacteria, you need to invest energy. So, the whole fundamental concept of bioenergetic comes from the fact that how energy and matter interact with each other. This is where it the crux boils down. It is basically a uh, interaction of energy and matter and the aspect what is important to realize it how this energy first of all what is the source of this energy? Is it a chemical source or is it a light source because or it could be any other source also. It could be a some geo sources, some wave sources, some wind sources. So, there has to be a source of energy which could be harvested by the molecules present on the cell and then converting that energy to do some useful work in terms of synthesizing energy rich molecules. So, in other words you are converting the energy into useful materials or you are converting the energy to some form of matter which could be further burnt to generate energy. So, in other words if I have to put it like this, this week let us uh, this is our lecture 6. lecture 6, this is week 2, week 2 lecture 1, first lecture of the second week. We are supposed to touch upon the two topics here, chemosynthesis and photosynthesis. Now, as the name indicates chemo and a photosynthesis. Okay? So, if I spread this or split this word into two parts chemo and photo. So, these are our source of energy either it is a chemical source or is it a light source? Okay. Light as 
energy source or chemical as energy source. So, what this energy essentially does? It helps. So, just keep this. So, first of all, this energy is being there should be a biomolecules having ability to trap this energy and the next thing is converting this energy to perform some useful work okay in terms of when we talk about useful work here what we essentially mean is synthesizing energy rich molecules energy rich molecules which in the biological platform we talk about ATP and other NADP, NADPH and all those kind of molecules and followed by using these energy rich molecule to further harvest energy and creating order. So, in other word, if you look at this whole process in a bird's eye view, if you get in bird's eye view, what will you observe is this is a process where essentially what we are doing, we are creating order out of chaos. Why chaos? So, whenever we talk about synthesizing energy rich molecules, in other word what we are talking about is a process whether using enzymes, using some other form of uh, supporting molecules, we are self assembling molecules, a particular kind of molecules, it could be ATP, NADPH, it could be anything, it does not matter. What is important for you to realize is you need energy, you need to supply some form of energy to execute this self assembling of molecule to create those energy rich molecules out here. And using these energy rich molecules further they are being burned. So, essentially these are being further burned to create an order. And this is if you look at this whole thing, this is where our whole food chain works essentially. So, you can fit in your story, this is where the plant kingdom is working and this is where most of the animal kingdom or who we are, we are working. So, if we look back the first week what we talked about, the first thing 
what we essentially talked about was simple biological molecules can form under prebiotic conditions. This is one of the concepts what we essentially underlined. So, under the broad heading what we talked about in the last week was from molecules to the first cell, right? From molecules to the just a recap to the first cell. This is what we have highlighted how the molecules make a first cell. So, in other words, a process of self assembling. And any self assembling process is executed by energy input. You need some form of energy. Now, when this energy is uh, this energy is chemical energy, then this is called chemosynthesis. You are synthesizing energy rich molecule using this energy and when it is photo or light, we call it photo synthesis. And if you remember or recollect in the very first point I highlighted this chemo and photosynthesis. But before we get into the fundamentals of chemosynthesis and photosynthesis, we needed to have a slightly better understanding of uh, the events or some of the prerequisite thermodynamical aspects which govern this extraordinarily beautifully evolved systems on the floor of earth. We are very fortunate to have seen such wonderfully evolved structures which could be an inspiration for generations to come. What will be our future of solar cell? What will be our future of energetics? How we can really resolve energy problems. So, that is where slowly this course will be kind of you know will be catering you to realize that you know if someday the engineers and the scientists can really emulate some of these processes by which nature is harvesting light, nature is harvesting energy by burning chemicals by using different kind of enzymes and it is all in the basics. It is not something out of the world the things are happening. So, that is where I am taking this opportunity to tell that this is where slowly the course will be going where bioenergetics will kind of merge with some of the futuristic energy requirement phenomena or what all we needed to really you know work upon. Okay? So, let us move on where we are. So, so, if we see this from molecules to the first cell. So, one of the experiment which uh, I have partly talked about and there are certain questions which were asked is Eure Miller's experiment. If you most of you have probably seen, but in case you have not, let me just draw the and mind it when Eure Miller presented that their work, there is so much skepticism I am just trying to draw the the whole apparatus. Okay. 
So, <clears throat> as we have always mentioned that our life has evolved in water. So, this is where heat is coming into play. So, this is the apparatus and this is water. Okay. And here you are having electric discharge. electric discharge and this leads to the formation of simple molecules as being shown here and this is a kind of a trap here where you are trapping these molecules and evaluating them. So, a typical experiment simulating the conditions on the primitive earth this is essentially a situation of primitive earth where simple biological molecules can form under prebiotic conditions. So, this is where highlighting the fact that simple current day biological molecules can be formed under prebiotic conditions. Okay. Okay. So, now whenever we <coughs> talked about this the condition that exist in exist as on, on earth. So, if you look at it very carefully so, this needs a source of energy. So, you are realizing that what soever may be the situation, whether it is a Uri Miller experiment, whether it is a chemical evolution, whether it is a photosynthesis, the critical aspect is that you need some form of energy. It could be heat energy coming from the deep sea geysers or, <coughs> or a hot water spring or geothermal energy or solar energy, some form of energy has to be put into the system in order to create an order among the molecules. So, this fundamental concept has to come very clear in your understanding of bioenergetics is it is an interaction of energy. input of energy which is self assembling the molecules to form a structure. So, this is the crux and in this whole process there is one parameter which continuously tells you a story called free energy delta G. We will come to this that free energy entropy enthalpy okay, these parameters will come very very handy as we will walk through this journey of understanding and this energy as I told you could come from multitude of sources. It could be thermal of course, we will be dealing with the chemical only it will be thermal it could be chemical it could be geothermal it could be light it could be gravitational, it could be electric, electrical, it could be um, 
gravitational light, oh, it could be osmotic. So, it could be even, you know, mechanical. Energy could have n number of sources or n number of uh, routes or routes by which it could govern the self-assembly of molecules. And this whole process thermodynamically we can define by seeing the change in the entropy or chaos, enthalpy and most importantly the free energy and the generation of heat. and they are all linked to heat. So, with this background, I will close in this class and I will move on to the next class where we will talk a little bit more about the simple biological molecules and how, how they are self-assembling and where on the evolutionary chart our most primitive organism stands and where we are and then we will follow up a little bit more on the free energy, entropy and enthalpy. Thank you.